Coming up on today's Airborne, the FAA will allow expanded use of portable electronic devices. Team Gamera sets an unofficial record for human-powered helicopter flight. And the FAA verifies the Citation X speed at 0.935 Mach. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, the FAA has decided that airlines can safely expand passenger use of portable electronic devices during all phases of flight. ANN's Tom Patton is here to report. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta said the agency is immediately providing airlines with implementation guidance for the new rules. But due to differences among fleets and operations, the implementation will vary among airlines. The agency expects many carriers will prove to the FAA that their planes allow passengers to safely use their devices in airplane mode, gate to gate, by the end of the year. The FAA based its decision on input from a group of experts that included representatives from the airlines, aviation manufacturers, passengers, pilots, flight attendants, and the mobile technology industry. Passengers will eventually be able to read ebooks, play games, and watch videos on their devices during all phases of flight with very limited exceptions. Cell phones should still be in airplane mode or with cellular service disabled, and you still can't make a call during a flight. Passengers will also be able to use onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth accessories, but you'll still have to return your tray tables and seat backs to their fully upright and locked positions. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. University of Maryland students from Team Gamera have unofficially set a world record of 97 seconds for the duration of a human-powered helicopter flight. Cyclist Justin Mount powered the helicopter during its record flight. The announcement came at an event held on October 26th, celebrating the team's accomplishments. Attending the event were senior officials from the Sikorsky Aircraft Corporation, United Technologies Corporation, and the American Helicopter Society International. Sikorsky and United Technologies Corporation representatives presented a trophy and a check for $50,000 to honor the team's achievements. Team Gamera's groundbreaking flight surpasses the previous duration flight record of 86 seconds, made by the Canadian Aerovelo team, which took place just two days before the Team Gamera flight. At the celebration event, the Team Gamera's achievements and contributions to human-powered helicopter flight and rotorcraft innovation were honored, as well as their contributions to the University of Maryland community. And in case you're wondering, Gamera was a mythical monster that showed up in a Japanese movie produced in 1965. Well, you don't have to be an aerodynamics expert to take one look at the new Cessna Citation X and figure it must be a pretty fast airplane. And well, you'd be right. Cessna recently concluded all high-speed certification flights with the FAA to validate the aircraft's maximum operating speed of 0.935 Mach. That's 536 knots true airspeed, solidifying the Citation X position as the fastest civilian aircraft in the world. The high-speed testing regimen includes handling qualities, stability, and control, in addition to maneuverability and high speeds. The Citation X high-speed validation was accomplished as a result of collaboration with FAA pilots and Cessna's engineering flight test team. Over 1,300 hours have been flown in the Citation X test program in preparation for certification, which is expected in the early part of 2014. It's part dune buggy, part ATV, and part powered parachute. It's called the Skyrunner All-Terrain Flying Car. And it's touted by Stuart Hamill, Skyrunner founder and CEO, as the next generation in the small elite segment of light sport aviation. Skyrunner says that the aircraft is not just for the adventurous or recreational enthusiast. The business and governmental applications could include large landowners, pipeline companies, emergency medical teams, media, aerial survey companies, border security, police, and search and rescue. Skyrunner weighs 926 pounds and can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in just 4.3 seconds, with a top speed of 115 miles per hour on the ground 
and 55 miles per hour in the air. Skyrunner is powered by a 1-liter EcoBoost direct injection turbo engine. Over the next few months, Skyrunner will be fulfilling ASTM design and manufacturing standards for its special light sport aircraft certification, making it a sport pilot eligible aircraft. The Skyrunner is expected to be certified and on the market in 2014. Two new warranty extension programs have been introduced by BRP for its four-stroke engines. Known as the Rotax Extended Services Terms Program, it's also referred to as the REST program. The REST program started at the beginning of this month. The choice of new warranty plans includes the plus one year or 200 hours program that provides a one year warranty extension or 200 additional flight hours, whichever occurs first, and the plus three years or up to TBO program that provides three years additional warranty or up to TBO or 2000 flight hours whichever occurs first. To ensure consumers have access to local service, the extended warranty is purchased at the authorized Rotax distributor located in the region where the Rotax engine is operated. Additional information about the REST program is available from regional Rotax distributors. Powerflow Systems of Daytona Beach, Florida, in close cooperation with Mall Air Incorporated in Moultrie, Georgia, has recently unveiled a new tuned exhaust system for both the tailwheel and tricycle gear version of Mall's iconic MX-7 series of aircraft, powered by four-cylinder O320 and O360 Lycoming engines. According to Darren Tillman, PowerFlow's general manager and chief test pilot, improved performance was a key objective of PowerFlow's design team. Carefully documented flight tests were conducted that showed a 4 to 7 miles per hour speed increase, a fuel burn reduction of 1 gallon per hour at economy cruise power, and an increase of 12% in the average rate of climb between 1,000 and 8,500 MSL. After observing these before and after flight tests, Ray Mall, son of founder BD Mall, said, quote, I was impressed with my first flight in the mall with the PowerFlow exhaust." End quote. More than 4,300 PowerFlow exhaust systems are in use in various models of aircraft around the world. Embraer has announced that it will expand its current Melbourne, Florida facilities with the addition of a new aircraft assembly line for the legacy 500 and 450 twin-engine business jets. The company's campus at Melbourne International Airport currently includes an assembly plant and paint facility for Phenom 100 and 300 business jets, as well as Embraer's Worldwide Customer Center for Executive Aircraft. As previously announced, the company is also constructing an engineering and technology center, currently operating at a temporary facility at the Melbourne Airport, which will become part of Embraer's Melbourne campus in 2014. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com 
Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero news.net. Credited with saving the lives of three critically wounded soldiers in Afghanistan, Captain Charles C. Napier was awarded on October 17th the Distinguished Flying Cross for his heroic actions in Afghanistan in December of 2012. Colonel Ginger Wallace, the commander of the Air Force 517th Training Group and Assistant Commandant of the Defense Language Institute Foreign Language Center, said, quote, it was an honor to award Captain Napier the Distinguished Flying Cross with valor during our Air Force Wingman Day." End quote. Napier's repeated skillful maneuvering of his aircraft into firing position just 60 feet away from the enemy, shielding friendly forces from intense enemy small arms fire, essentially saved the lives of men on the ground that day. Captain Napier said, quote, Once the pararescue men packaged up the wounded and all were on board, we returned to base. It was just like any other day. That's what we we're trained to do. We help people who are in harm's way." End quote. After 16 years of the annual Indianapolis Air Show, they've called it quits. The decision follows the cancellation of this year's show because the federal government's budget sequestration prevented the booking of its headline act, the Blue Angels Navy Jet Team. Robert Duncan, chairman of the Air Show's executive committee, said that without funds from the 2013 event, the Air Show had to lay off its three-person staff, which made it impossible to plan and find sponsors for the 2014 show. Added to this, they could not be assured of booking a military jet team in 2014. Military jet teams typically boost a show's attendance by about 30%. The show's goal is raising money for the Riley Hospital for Children at Indiana University Health. Duncan said, quote, I'm very sad and regret that all these various circumstances created a perfect storm where it would be difficult to produce a show, end quote. If you missed our live webcast for the Redbird Migration Conference held in San Marcos, Texas last week, Anna is here to give you a second chance. The conference was jam-packed with great ideas useful information, and a host of interesting speakers. And while not everyone could make it to Central Texas to attend the conference, you have the ability to hear all of Tuesday's speakers on demand via streaming videos from Aero TV. Topics for the migration conference included a recap of the first year of the operation of Redbird Laboratory, training millennials, new delivery strategies, delivering traditional content in new ways, diesel technology, and innovating a future. Speakers ran the gamut from familiar faces from AOPA, ANN, Gamma, King Schools, and Redbird, to experts in the fields of flight training, new media, and new engine technologies. For more information, you can visit www.aero-news.net slash live. And now it's time for Aero Video of the Week. Today's AVW is about the recovery of the Nemesis NXT Relentless after an engine failure on the way to Sun and Fun 2013. The 4 minute 23 second photo album tells the story of getting relentless back in the air. Just search YouTube for Recovery of Nemesis NXT Relentless 2013 Trip to Sun and Fun. After 30 years of loving and dedicated work, Kyle Brumfeld's Falco F-8L homebuilt airplane, named My Dream Machine, is about to fly. The airplane, a Stelio Fratty design, is built of plywood, meaning that Brumfield had to heat and soak wood parts and bend them into shade to create his plane. But more than that, he worked from plans, not a kit with pre-cut and pre-drilled parts, handcrafting every piece of the airplane. His wife upholstered the seats and the instrument panel placards are painted by hand. Brumfield's friend Pete Clapp, a former Goodyear aerospace engineer, said everything about the plane is impeccable. Clapp said, quote, you look at his project and you want to go home and burn yours. He's done a stunning job, end quote. Now, for the first time since 1983, the family car at the Brumfield home 
we'll finally see the inside of the garage. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.